Hello everyone. In this video, we will be studying interview questions part three for software testing. So let's see first, differences between severity and priority. So let's see what is the difference between severity and priority. Severity is used to define the seriousness of the defect on the application or build, while priority is used to decide the order in which the defect needs to be fixed. So in severity, it is used to define how serious the defect is, okay? And priority is what uh, to decide in which order that defect needs to be fixed. So this is the very basic difference between severity and priority. Now let's see the next differences also. Severity is driven by the standards of functionality, while priority is driven by the business value of the application. Severity is set by the tester while reporting the bugs. Although a tester can set the priority, the developer management can finalize based on scenario. Different levels of severity are crash, blocker, critical, major, moderate, medium, minor, or low, while different levels of priority are high, medium, and low. The next question, what do you mean by cyclomatic complexity? Cyclomatic complex complexity is used to measure the number of linearly independent paths that we can have for a module. It is used to determine the stability and level of confidence on the module. Cyclomatic complexity can be calculated by the flow control graphs or flow charts of the modules. The cyclomatic complexity can be calculated by using the mathematical equation CC, that is cyclomatic complexity is equal to E minus N plus 2, where E means H and N means the nodes. Let's move ahead to the next question. What are the differences between client server and web applications? Client server application. An application that runs on the client system, that is the user's computer, and can access the remote server for information is called as a client server application. While a web application that runs entirely on a web browser is called as a web application or web app. The user interaction with the server is done using client-side application or user interface. While in web application, the user interaction with the web application is done always by using a browser. Client server applications are platform dependent based on the programming languages used to develop the application. While web application is a platform independent as it requires only a browser to access the application in any operating system. Client server applications are considered as a two tier applications while web applications are considered as three tier applications. Client server application supports less number of users while web application supports more number of users. Security risk will be less in client server application as it has less user base, while security risk will be more as it can be used by very large number of users. So everyone just remember that the client server application is the application that run on a client server and it accesses the remote server for information while web application runs entirely on a web browser. Now, next question, what is, the, what is a test plan and what are the different contents of test plan? So let's see what is a test plan. A test plan is a project level document that defines the scope of testing, approach to follow, and the schedule for testing the application and identifies the test items for testing process along with the person responsible for testing. In simple word, a test plan is a document that answers the basic questions like what to test, how to test, where to test, who will test, when to test, and why to test the applications. The purpose of test plan is to set the expectations and align the team for success throughout the testing process. It is the first thing that we will be doing in STLC. 
Now let's see some of the contents of the test plan document. Uh, the contents are feature to be tested, feature not to be tested, scope and objective, test approach, test environment, entry and exit criteria, risk and mitigation plans, roles and responsibilities, and test deliverables. Moving ahead to the next question, how much testing is sufficient on an application? Testing is a never-ending process, and completely testing an application is not at all possible. In order to decide how much testing is, is sufficient for an application, we have to consider some factors. First, we have to thoroughly test it that all the functionalities of the application with respect to the, uh, to the customer's expectation. Then the second, there should be any major bugs in the application. Third, we have to complete all code reviews, static unit integration and UI level scenarios. Next, we have to verify that all the functional and non-functional scenarios. And the last one, are we confident with the current state of the application? Let's go ahead with the next question. What do you mean by data-driven testing? Data-driven testing is a software testing method that we use to test a functionality with different sets of data in the same test case. The test data and the expected results required to test the functionality will be stored in the Excel or CSV files. Every time we execute the test case, a different set of data will be copied from the Excel file and stored the result in the same file. Data-driven testing is an automation testing method or technique. Now let's see the next question. What is the difference between BBA and ECP? Now BVA stands for boundary value analysis and ECP stands for equivalence class partitioning. Now BVA, it is a test design technique which is used to test the boundaries of the functionality. BVA helps us to test the extreme limits of the functionality. In BVA, we will find the lower and upper boundaries and test both the boundaries with conditions like N minus one, N, N plus one, where N represents our boundary. ECP, that is equivalence class partitioning. It is a, also a test design technique, which is used to divide the given data conditions into valid and invalid classes or ranges and test the functionality with one value from each valid and invalid class in order to reduce the time required for testing. Let's see what is the next question. Difference between product backlog sheet and sprint backlog sheet. Product Backlog Sheet is a document that contains the list of all functionalities that we have to develop by end of the product development. It contains all the user stories of the customer, enhancements needs to be added or performance improvements, etc. They are not currently in the build. While Sprint Backlog Sheet is the document that contains only the list of specific functionalities that needs to be developed in the current iteration or a sprint. Generally, sprint backlog sheet is prepared from a product backlog items. I hope you are getting cleared. Now the next question, what are standups? Standups, it is a 15 to 20 minute time boxed event or a meeting that is held within the scrum team to synchronize the work done and to plan for the next day. In a standup meeting, every team member has to answer three questions. What did I do? What will I do? And do I see any do I see any implement <laughs> do I see any issues that prevents me from going further? Standups called as daily scrum meetings. Now, what are the different levels of software testing? And what are the different levels of testing that will be performed by a tester, okay? So the different levels of testing available in software testing are unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and user acceptance testing. Tester will perform system testing, okay? So keep this thing in mind. These are the different testing uh, software testing methodologies or levels of software testing, that is unit testing, 
integration testing, system testing, and user acceptance testing, UIT. And tester will be performing system testing. So everyone, I hope you are clear with these uh, questions and they will surely help you in your interview. Uh, thank you so much. Let's see and let's meet in the next video. Thank you.